So, Steve, would you like to do a little bit of an introduction? Tell the people about yourself. Uh, thank you very much. Great to be here, and thank you for um, for asking. Uh, my name is Steve Rocky. I'm people director for uh, Homegrown Hotels and Limewood Group. Um, I kind of started off in hospitality. I did a hotel catering degree, and then I graduated in 1999. Uh, and I've always done HR. So uh, my first job was an on-site personnel, as it was called back then, personnel officer um, at the Millennium Dome. So kind of opened and closed that. Uh, uh, did uh, probably about six years in contract catering um, with Compass Group, another six years as an HR manager with Pizza Express, so kind of into the world of casual dining. Mm -hmm. Three years thereafter with Byron. Uh, I then did some consultancy stuff for about a year, and then the opportunity at Homegrown came along, which was one not to be missed. Um, so yeah, I uh, started to, to work with the Pigs and Limewood Group for about three and a half years now, something like that. But the, the one that really stands out there is, is the, uh, the Millennium Dome. That's an iconic project of our time, isn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, back in the day, it got a tremendous amount of bad press. Um, but uh, as a as a first gig, surrounded by very seasoned operators, um, as I look back on it now, um, it was an incredible learning experience. I mean, I'd screwed more stuff up than I got right. But um, as a first job in that environment and starting to really understand, well, not really understand, but get to grips a little bit more with the kind of the HR operations tension that there always is, as there always should be. Um, it was a great, it was a great experience. Um, yeah, one which I look back on now as, a, as, a, as an incredible opportunity to have. I think you made, you made a really pertinent point there as well, that kind of you know, we make mistakes as we go along the journey. And uh, as long as we learn from those mistakes and as long as we learn from those errors quickly, then that's, I mean, that's a key part of it, isn't it, really? Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, at, at every in every hospitality role, whether you're you know you're waiting a table, you're cooking a dish, you're doing my job, you're doing accounts, you know, marketing, whatever it is, because of the sort of the fluid nature, if you like, of of interacting with people running a hospitality business, mm -hmm. invariably you you turn left when you should have turned right, you know, and um, how it is you recover from that is. Um, is kind of everything rather than getting it right all the time, which if you shoot for that, you're never going to make it. Excellent. So let's, let's crack in and start uh, dealing some of those questions. So we're going to look at some of the questions that people are Googling and asking about and some of the information that uh, is, is out there and is being craved for. Okay. And our starting point really is how do I, how do people find the right employer for themselves? You know, what's, what advice would you give to people to really be able to do that? Uh, it's a big, a big first one. Um, I, I think for, for me, I mean, if you're in hospitality, then you've ticked the box of kind of food and food service. So um, you don't need to kind of go down the, which industry do I want to work in? Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, it all comes down to culture. So um, what a business does is one thing, but how it is it does it is the bit that makes you happy. So if you are uh, eating out or you've eaten in places or there are places that you you would see as being aspirational to go and work in, you know, fine dining restaurant, um, uh, five-star hotel, whatever it is, or indeed, you know, um, a casual dining, what it, you know, chain. Absolutely. It, it, it's got to be around what's the right cultural fit for you. Do you like their chats? Do you like how they present themselves online? Do you like how they sound on Twitter? Do you like how they sound on Insta? It, it's that is the vibe. And those are the businesses that you should then target. And the only reason you shouldn't do that is if there is a specific skill that you want to learn, because that's the next thing, that's the stepping stone for you. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. if you're wanting five star, then... Uh, the only way to understand five star is to work in a five star hotel. Um, so if you are wanting to learn very specific skills, then then go to somewhere where you know you're going to learn those specific skills and go big, you know, and find the best to learn. 
But unless that is what it is you're after, I think it's, it's all about the place that you're going to fit into um, because, you know, hopefully you're going to be there for years rather than months um, and learn to grow with that business. So I think if you're finding some, if you find somewhere that fits with how it is you roll, then go there. Makes a lot of sense. So you said, as you were talking through your own history, you said that homegrown was an opportunity that came along. Uh, and it just it felt too good to miss. I guess that ties into that same kind of that same idea, doesn't it? What what was it about that business that really kind of called you in? Um, again, the kind of <laughs> the culture. Um, there's probably some skill stuff in that was interesting as well. I, I hadn't done hotels before, so it was interesting to kind of um, uh, it was interesting to 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 learn a different to learn a different business, to learn a different style, both. Um, you know, the pigs, which is very different to Limewood, for example, which is a five red star hotel. Um, so there were some skills there that were interesting, but broadly it was it was the culture and how the business is run. It's kind of owner founder, entrepreneurial, um, organic kind of growth, a lot of focus on internal succession, all the stuff mm -hmm. that if you're sort of a bit HR people geeky, it's sort of really good to kind of get your teeth stuck into. So it was, yeah, it was a, it's, well, it is a great business to, to kind of work in and work for and be part of. So that culture <laughs> makes the world of difference, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it does. And it, it, I think it's the bit that um, the work can be interesting. You can have interesting work, which is what it is you do. Mm -hmm. But if how it is you do it, bores you to death it ain't going to be very interesting for very long yeah so um you can do great work in lots of different places but if if you're finding that the culture is either stifling or too much sometimes or too little um you don't agree with it maybe um then those you know then you need to move away from those businesses i i have moved away from a business where i you know, in the past, I it wasn't right for me. So, and if I'm saying that as the head of people, then it's you know, then I've got to go. So, yeah, you know, it's it has to be about the culture. If you're if you're if you're not in it, if you can't um, if you can't wax lyrical, if you can't sit here and when someone says, "Well, why do you do what it is you do?" If you can't bang out why it is you're doing what it is you're doing, then get another job. Yeah, I think it's a rule in life, isn't it? Really, um, you talked about kind of social media and. Um, being able to kind of hear that voice in social media. So yeah, cultures are, culture can be quite a difficult thing for people to put their finger on about what it actually is and how you would define it. Yeah. What are the kind of indicators in social media that you would think that a business could potentially kind of highlight some real positives or, or some kind of red flags, possible red flags? I mean, I think the, the voice is one thing. So how, you know, how it reads and what's being posted what's important to that business so if you if people are posting a lot around food if you're not interested in food then maybe it's not but if it's a place that's posting a lot about people and you really want to hang around with people um so i think the content of what's going out is important the tone of voice is really important i think it's also it, it's also advantageous for you to like what it is you have to sell mm -hmm. um so if you are selling hamburgers and you love hamburgers, that's good. Um, so uh, what it is that, that 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 business does and what it's about, I think, is is also important. Um, and again, how that comes across on on sort of social media and on their website, videos, um, and then the acid test is going in. So go into that particular restaurant or hotel or where it is you're looking at, and just sit there have a cup of coffee or whatever and just work out what the vibe is you can you can feel what's going on in a hotel or you can feel what's going on in a restaurant when you walk in even if you're new into the industry you, can, you walk into somewhere and you know whether you're going to have a good time or whether you're not when you're in an environment if you're looking around and thinking those people look happy those yeah. people look like they're enjoying what they do the what they're serving up is absolutely amazing and they can be proud to put that down in front of a guest and say you will you will love that yeah you yeah, yeah you can enjoy that and makes a yeah. lot of difference. Oh, definitely. If we're looking at roles and we're thinking, right, I'm, I'm in a situation where um, I need a job now. Um, mm -hmm. 
do you think that there is a kind of a, a maximum number of jobs that people should be applying for at any given point or should they just be going all in and applying for every job that they look at and think that looks like it kind of makes sense to me I think tailored and targeted is is always the way to go else it just screams panic um and i think it's important that as as a candidate you are out in the market representing yourself as you would want to be seen so if you again go back to those businesses that you like respect wants to be part of and then go after those ones mm -hmm. rather than just totally scattergun approach um because it'll come across like that when you start when people start calling you um and that's not that's not what it is you want i guess that culture fit is a two-way street isn't it you know we're looking for something that works for us but we've got to work for that brand, that brand culture. And as you say, you know, if we're going for that scattergun approach, um, very few brands are looking at and thinking, yes, you are the ideal person for me. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if you're approaching businesses that are very um, culturally driven, if you're not, Kai's back. If you're not, um, if you're not, if you're not acting in a, in that way. Like you really want them? Yeah. I, you, you have to ask the question, why is that they're going to want you? Um, if we, so maybe, um, I guess, as I found myself into a new job and uh, I, I feel like I've gone through all of the tests and I feel like I've done the culture test and I feel like I've done the voice test, the tone of voice, and it all felt like it made sense. Yeah. But I find myself in that job and pretty quickly, I hate it. And I just, okay. this is not for me. Okay, yeah. I do. Well, where should I go next? What, what should be my plan? Um, the key question to ask yourself is why? Um, if you're finding answers like it's hard work, welcome to work. Um, if it's the type of work, but you like where it is you are, then maybe it's the right place, wrong role. Mm -hmm. um, if you're new into the industry, um again maybe you just need to i would always advocate sticking it out for a little bit longer than you think you should or that you that you kind of want to yeah um because it, it, it might just be that you just don't understand how it all works so you you do your little you do your one cog in the giant wheel but you haven't quite seen how your bit is so important to the running of the entire business yeah. it's really important to ask yourself why it is that it's not working um because if you're fine if you're somewhere that you have taken the time to investigate and you think is culturally right um then it's probably more about either getting used to the job that you're in uh if getting to understand better the people around you and building those relationships um because you've kind of ticked all the boxes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just need a little bit more time. Um, and it can, it does take time to work out the culture of, of the business in which you work. It takes time to understand out the processes and go through induction and your training and, yep. and all of that sort of good stuff. Um, so once it is, you've done all of that, it's it does just take some time just to just bed in and just understand better how it all works and why so you know i would really advocate sticking at it for a little bit more because it might be that actually that 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 understanding then means actually i get it now i understand how my understand my place in it all um and now i can contribute better Makes perfect sense. I think resisting that temptation to just knee jerk, um, absolutely vital. And I guess it comes back to that idea of kind of response versus reaction again. You know, I responding to the situation, responding to kind of the the tweaks and changes you might need to make. And as you say, understanding where the part that you play, um, rather than reacting from that emotional place of just I hate this, I don't like this, this just doesn't work for me. Um, yeah, and it is. In, and again, it's just, it's any job. When you start somewhere new, it's different, it's tiring, it's overwhelming, it's different hours, it's a different uh, it's a different structure, it's different people, everything is different. And you need to allow yourself time to 
appreciate and understand the difference and work out where you fit into that. And I, I think if all it is you do is a few weeks and you think, don't like it, I'm not quite sure what you've learned. Absolutely. If someone like me will ask you the question. Why did you leave? A reasonable question to ask. It's a pretty reasonable question to ask. And if you haven't got a really good answer as to why it is, then, you know, where's your stickability? And it becomes less tempting for, as a recruiter to, uh, to take that chance on you, is that, I guess? Yeah, because if you, you know, as a flip it the other way, a business is about to invest thousands and thousands of pounds into you. And that's not an exaggeration. It's thousands and thousands of pounds. And everyone has to make sure that the 5,000 pounds, let's call it, that you're about to set to one side, you're going to put towards the person you, A, you want to put towards, but you think is really going to benefit and appreciate from that investment in them. And as a result, it's going to think this is a great place to be. I want to be here. If you find yourself in that situation, having that conversation maybe with your line manager uh, or with the recruiter that kind of placed you and just potentially talking through some of your concerns. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it, you are surrounded by people that have done exactly what it is you've done. Everyone had a first day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Use your use the people in your team, use your line manager, use the boss, use whoever it is. The, the, yeah, the recruiter that you initially spoke to or your HR manager or if you are in a business where your owner walks around, don't be afraid to go grab them. You know, go and find out how it was for them on their first day mm -hmm. or their first week or their first few months. And everybody's is exactly the same. It's, it's difficult. It's hard work. It's different. It's, it's intense. Um, there's so much information to absorb. There's new names. There's a menu. There's everything is different. And you've got to allow yourself the time to um, understand all of that. Because um, then you can use all of that knowledge to your advantage later on. So start wearing your guests and wearing people around you. And then you'll love what it is you do because everybody will love you. And that's what we signed up for in the first place is to wear those guests. Here, right? Blow them all away. It's the thing, I think the thing I love most about hospitality is that every day we get the chance to make people smile. It's an amazing yeah. thing. An amazing yeah, People walk out happy. And it's more often than not. Well, that's, that's, I mean, that's a good day. That's an absolutely good day. And there's not many people, not many industries they get the opportunity to do that it's quite as often with the frequency that we do. Sure. Yeah, true. It's an amazing thing. You'll find somewhere where you naturally fit into. I love that. There is a place for us all. Yeah, absolutely. We've just got to search for it and get the right one. Yeah. Amazing.